you start to build a community around you. And you do this based on share as well. It would be good to get an insight on how you started on the journey. Um, um, it started from the, from the lockdown. I can't believe I'm about to tell you this. <laughs> That. So, well, thanks for sharing that. Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Welcome to The Change Lead, the podcast providing leaders with the insight needed to get things done in a rapidly changing and complex world. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. Connect with our community of like-minded leaders on our website, thechangelead.com. Welcome to The Change Lead with your host, Babatope Ipiyumi. Wherever you are in your career, a powerful personal brand is a massive asset. You might be just starting out your career, maybe in your 20s, you might be in your 30s, 40s, or even later in your career. Wherever you are in your career, uh, it's essential to have a, a powerful personal brand. And the question I have, as a podcaster, I always have a question. The question I have is, can we all create a powerful personal brand? What do we need to do to create a personal brand? a powerful personal brand. And to discuss this with me today is Stuart Taylor. Now, Stuart's got a very interesting background. So you're a project professional. You invest a lot of time helping other project professionals, but you're also what I would call a YouTuber, a, a verified YouTuber. Um, and you combine that together quite well. So it would be great to have this conversation. I'm looking forward to this conversation with you about building a powerful personal brand. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thank you. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> nice. Um, so I'm going to start with the first question really is, why is it important? Why is it essential for everybody to invest the time required to build a powerful personal brand? I think these days we live in a, an age where no matter what industry you work in, there's no such thing as a job for life. Uh, I remember working in local government, in councils, in NHS, and I remember the shocks that took place in those environments after things like the financial crisis, after a change of government, where people who'd been told all their lives, you get into this job, you work for this organisation, and you're going to have a job for life, you're never going to have any problems. And they were walking around shell-shocked after, say, the election where the coalition government came to power and they realised that, say, the NHS was going to be completely restructured. And a lot of people are having to reapply for their own jobs or variations of them in the new, in the new structures that were going to replace them. Sure. And they couldn't handle that shock. They'd, they'd been misled into a sense of complacency through their whole career, believing that they had a safe job. And that revealed to me very early on that there's no such thing. So then what do you do to mitigate the risk that at any point, no matter how permanent your contract says you are, you can be let go. And every other day at the moment, it seems like we're reading tech news about um, large giants getting rid of thousands of people at a time all over the world. And my answer to that at the time was become so good that they can't replace you become really competent, become best in class. And then it started to evolve into, well, also build a reputation for reliability, for being somebody who's good to work with. And that's all great. But eventually I came to the conclusion that you do this and only your immediate people know about you. Sure. So, if you go, but your whole team goes as well, you're in no better position. And what I've been seeing over the last few years, and I see it all the time, is people who have basically been really quiet on social media. They turn up on LinkedIn and they're saying, I'm in a crisis, help. There's a situation going on in my life. I've lost my job. I've got to pay the bills. I need to have some help from you, my community. But they haven't built a community. All they've built is a contact list. Maybe they've kept track of people in the way that people used to use Friends Reunited and they're just stacking people on there and that's it. It's just like, I worked with you, I remember you, you're on my network now. And that's as good as it gets. So 
what I learned from that was you need to build a community instead because you turn up on there and you say, I'm just one of a thousand people who've been fired and we're all flooding the market at the same time doing perhaps similar sort of roles. Can you get me a job? The people who care about you already are probably going to be the ones who'll try to help you. They'll, they'll, they'll recommend you, they'll endorse you. But everybody else, you, you're just one voice out of hundreds yeah. and there's nothing unique or special about you at all. And there's no sense of obligation for them whatsoever to do anything to help you unless they happen to be holding a job spec at that moment that they're hiring for and they can see you match up directly to it. They are no use to you at all. But if you shape your own brand, you start to build a community around you and you do this based on sharing, sharing what you already know and not asking for anything in return. Just keep giving and giving and giving. People start to associate you with the things that you're giving. They'll associate you with the knowledge you're sharing. And by doing so, you'll end up becoming an influencer is one of the terms. I hate that one, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I called my uh, channel Influential PMO to kind of mock that a little bit. <laughs> that was part of the reason. The other side of it is PMOs in project management world should be influential, but there's, it, there's a two-sided um, thing there to the how, I'm, how I name the channel. But if you start doing this, you start to get associated with the thing that you're talking about. And then when the situation comes when, oh my God, I need help, I'm at risk of losing my job. You don't just have the eight people around you who've known that you're good. You've suddenly got a community of thousands of people who associate you as being good. Whether it's entirely true or not, because you've not, you've not been tested by them. There are thousands of people that you've never worked alongside of, but their association with you is that you are competent. Yeah. You can communicate clearly either by text or video or whatever method you want to use. And you are now in a position where they can recommend you. And because they've taken so much value from you over the time that they've been consuming your content, then they're also in a position where they feel obliged to endorse you. There is a, a psychological aspect to this where um, there is a, a sense of uh, reciprocity. It's true. Where you know you, you take so much from people. And salespeople know about this. They, they know that if they give and give and give and give, eventually you can ask for something back and people will feel a little bit compelled to do it. It doesn't have to be financial. It doesn't have to be uh, handing over money for something. It could just be, you know what? This person's done enough for me. I've got nothing for them. I can't recommend a job to them because I don't know of anything, but I'll share their post with the rest of my network and I'll amplify their message and maybe someone in my network can help them. And that can make the huge difference. Yeah, well, I think that's a really powerful thing you've shared. I think one thing that you touched on there is a team gets lost you, and those eight people around you are people that know about you. I think that's so key that people realize that you might be the best in the world, the best in class, the best in your profession, but if people beyond your net, beyond your immediate working group are not aware of that, you don't have the leverage required that allows you to actually make the most of that skill, that ability. Um, something you mentioned also is about always giving. That is, a lot of people might shun that, might you know, bulk at that. If you're giving, 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 what would you say to that? If you... It's an investment of time and effort. No doubt about that. And it's an investment that can be a lot of time and a lot of effort and a lot of cost potentially. Um, I'm not suggesting everybody go and set up a YouTube studio in their house and start recording things on, on the latest cameras and doing all the latest editing. It could just be a bit of text that you can just post onto somewhere like LinkedIn. And I'd recommend LinkedIn because let's face it, if you're trying to mitigate the risk of uncertainty in your career, LinkedIn is probably going to be a more effective place to do that than Instagram. Yeah. So you can start to think of, what I'd suggest is you start to think of the things that you constantly find yourself telling people, uh, the lesson that you keep repeating to people. And that's an indication of maybe something that you're a little bit passionate mm -hmm. about, uh, or it's something that most people just don't understand or don't already come pre-prepared with this bit of knowledge. And just jot it down somewhere refine it a little bit, make sure that it, it 
reads well when you type it or read it or sing it, whatever you're going to do with it. And then just post it. Post it into the world and say, here's my bit of knowledge about this, about the industry, about a skill or whatever it is. That can take five minutes. It can take less than five minutes. It can take 60 seconds. <laughs> post it into the world and put a note at the bottom and say, hey, if you're interested in this kind of thing, make sure you connect with me. Yeah, there'll I be think, more. Yeah, I think I think and that's that's quite key actually. It's a very simple. Notice what you're good at. Notice what you keep repeating. Mm. So, it's an indication of what you can share, what how you can bring value as well. It would be good to get an insight on how you started on the journey. Um, you, like you mentioned, your your YouTube channel already, the influential PMO. How did you start on this journey of building the personal brand, and how's that journey been? Well, I had a false start few years back where I started a blog uh, talking about PMO um, work and my opinions on PMOs. Um, the written form is not my strong point, so I just couldn't find the motivation to keep going. But what happened uh, in 2020 was I moved jobs from a job where I had a team of people I was training and developing to a role where that wasn't happening and I kind of missed it and I just wanted to keep sharing and passing these things on. And there were so many lessons that I keep sharing with people over and over and over. There was a little bit of it that just said, you know what, make one video once about it and then that's it. You can just refer people back to your video and that's it. You'll never have to explain this again. It hasn't really panned out that way. But at the time, that's where the idea started to form. There is a, a slightly stranger aspect to how this got started though. Um, it started from the, from the lockdown. I can't believe I'm about to tell you this. <laughs> this is going to get me into trouble. Um, but my wife got drunk one night, and that's why I have a YouTube channel. Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember after the lockdown, the first lockdown, and the restrictions started to ease off? Yeah. My wife had a few friends around that evening, and they had a few drinks. And okay. I, I'd put the baby to bed and... He'd settled and I, I tried to sleep. And then they made such a racket when they were leaving. Woke me up, woke the baby up. My wife gave up, she fell asleep, snoring next to me. And I, and you know when you, you've been woken up and you're a little bit annoyed and you can't get back to sleep because you're a little bit annoyed. So I went downstairs just to try and find some way to find some sort of peace and distraction. And I just signed up on Skillshare and I'd seen there was a course by somebody called Sorel Amore about uh, having an authentic brand, the power of having an authentic brand. And I thought, this will help me on my LinkedIn stuff because I was really struggling on what to put about the description on there. And I put it on and it, she was actually talking about being a content creator and being an authentic content creator. Very useful lesson there. Um, whatever you do put in the world as your brand, be authentic, don't try to be somebody else. And that was the main lesson from it, but it created an interest in that world of being the creator. She got famous for traveling around the world and teaching people how to do effective selfies of yourself. And that, that was ultimately what led to her success. Okay. But then that kind of led to other creators. And I started to see that they were able to just set up a channel uh, with an, a mini studio within their own home. And I thought, well, I could do that. It doesn't take that much equipment. And more importantly, it doesn't take up that much space. <laughs> and, and you can disassemble most of it and put it all away. So I started thinking, okay, yeah, I, can, I could probably do this. And then I thought, well, what would I say? What would I talk about? And I thought, well, it would be project management, obviously. And then I thought, well, what will I talk about on my project management channel? So I wrote down about, the idea was to write down 20 things that I could talk about so that as soon as I've done one script and published something, I could then fall back on. There's 19 other ideas that I can jump onto and pick, pick the next one out and just get on with it. As it turned out, I ended up writing 50 ideas. Wow, okay. So I had, if I looked at it, if I was gonna do one video per week, which I was doing at the time, uh, I had a year's worth of content ideas there. And that's the thing, you know, you, you get the idea in your head and you gotta write it down. And as soon as you, Think of something that you think is of value to somebody else. Write it down, so just jot it down. Don't publish it immediately. Just jot it down in a notes app or in a notepad or 
or wherever's convenient, and then just sit with it for a while, refine it, and then push it out there. And you don't have to do something every day. It used to be, I think, on LinkedIn, people talked about publishing multiple times per day. I think you get, I think your reach gets limited by doing that these days. It's more more impactful to make a effective, powerful post that is of value to somebody. Yeah. Doesn't have to be to everybody, just to somebody. Share that with the world. Leave it for at least twenty four hours before you publish anything else. Yeah, I think that that's that's quite useful. Um, interesting story you shared about that opportunity you had about being woken up. Um, I'm going to get in so much trouble for that. <laughs> Look, well, thanks for sharing that. Edit that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for sharing that. Um, if most people watching listening will not have that benefit, they won't have the opportunity to be woken up in the middle of the night. <laughs> um, are there practical tips you can share of? How people can get started? What can they do to get on that journey of building their personal brand? Um, you mentioned a lot of things, but it would be good to get a little bit practical, a little bit specific. The yes. hardest part wasn't so much the content and the ideas to share. It was about how much of myself to share and what version of myself. You see, as soon as you start talking to a camera, and if ever you've done this exercise, if ever you've had a recording of, say, a, a webcam uh, or a, a WebEx call or something like that, and you watch yourself back, you kind of think, gosh, my energy levels are a bit low. I look like I was falling asleep. That's because the camera steals about 20%. So the idea is you amp yourself slightly. Yeah. And you go, okay, this is how I'm now going to present to you. This is how I'm now going to talk to you. And it's like, ugh. Then you start thinking, oh my God, I'm like all the rest of these YouTube vloggers and I'm going to start walking into rooms going, hi guys, what's happening? Since the last time you caught up with me, I've done this. Uh, you end up becoming that character. You end up becoming a some sort of a, I don't know, a cookie cutter YouTube creator. The best thing to do is just be yourself with just a little bit more energy. Okay. Just And the only reason you're amplifying the energy a little bit is because the camera's stealing it. Uh, I, I remember I did a presentation once. Uh, I was at a bank and I was telling people how to do risk management. And it was a topic I was enthusiastic about. I was enjoying sharing it. And at the end, uh, one of the bosses said that it was great content. It's a shame that I seemed like I was so depressed. <laughs> and it was for that reason, I hadn't realized at that point the camera just steals a little bit yeah. of the energy. So find something you're interested in talking about. Something that you can talk about for years, ideally, because you don't want to be jumping topics too much. You can jump into a related topic, say I talk about project management, but that also sometimes connects to careers and work or sometimes business but it would never say extend to other interests like sport or politics yeah. or anything like that if i was to start posting about those kind of things it would confuse my audience who would think well i don't know what this is i'd stop engaging with it yeah. and as a result the algorithms that drive all of these social media engines would go oh that's pretty poor content <laughs> we're not going to promote it then all you've done is you've wasted your time. Yeah. So it's a very interesting one and very, very practical advice. Amp the energy up. Yes. <laughs> amp your energy up, particularly if you're on camera. Can you amp energy up on text? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> How would you do that? <laughs> um, caps lock and emojis. <laughs> No, and, and I think it's, it's a good point. I think there, there are ways of amping energy up. Yeah. Pictures, emojis, I think it's a good point. I yeah. I've got into the habit now of when I'm publishing something in text on LinkedIn, I'm using ideally short sentences with an emoji, usually at the end. Okay. I started off thinking that was just childish. <laughs> but what happens is it does catch the eye a little bit does. and people do get drawn a little bit more to it. By having the information chunked up in short sentences, it's also easier to read. So there's an element where it's actually making it more efficient for people to read as well, and it's more inviting. If you just put a big chunk of, or like a big paragraph in there, people will read the start of it and then they go, nah, and then yeah. I'll move on. Because the other part of this is having a hook point where you have to capture attention in the first three seconds because you're, you're not just competing with everything else on that platform you're competing with everything else in the world. 
you're competing with that person watching your YouTube video or reading your text or looking at the other guy's text or watching Netflix or you know just walking up and looking out of a window which nobody ever does anymore but you know everyone is just full of distractions and the idea is that you hook people in very quickly with the opening message whatever you put at the start of your post it has to be the reason why somebody's going to care yeah. it's got to either they've got to care about it already or it's got to make them curious it's got to make them feel something yeah, no, I think that's good. You can amp the energy up on text. You can get attention. Yeah. Um, if somebody listening to this, watching this, says, Stuart, I like everything you've said. I like this. Good. But I'm an introvert. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to struggle to get out there. And I've, I've heard that said a few times, actually. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, a few thoughts. Um, firstly, introverts tend to do well on YouTube because when they're talking to a camera, they're not awaiting a human response back. So they're actually in a position of strength in there where that they can perhaps talk more easily to a piece of glass and plastic. It's, it, it works in that kind of way. So that's fine. In terms of engagement with the world and yeah, how kind people can be on the internet, um, speaking for myself, I've not had any kind of trolling or any kind of negativity. I think one person just willfully misunderstood something I posted and responded in what would have been the worst possible interpretation of it. And I just ignored it. That was it. There are pretty hateful people out there. You can delete their comments, you can mute them, you can uh, unfriend them and whatever you need to do. There are each social media platform will have some way of protecting you from them. It, of course, if you are seeing negative things wrote about you, that can have a profound impact on you if it's happening a lot. But the truth is, in say, professional fields like project management, I, I'm, I'm guessing other professional fields as well, it doesn't happen as much as say, fields such as politics, right. where, where people are expressing strong opinions. Um, share something with the world, you may be wrong, people might challenge it. And sometimes they'll do so in a friendly way, sometimes it'll be less friendly, sometimes it'll be outright hostile. But I think the benefits outweigh the negatives. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's a good point. And it's interesting you're saying that an introvert might find it easier being a YouTuber, providing content to, without expecting the human interaction. I think something else I've, with introverts is also introverts can spend a bit more time introspecting with introspection. Mm. So maybe a bit more thoughtful in what they share out. Mm. So to, to your point, it's not one or the other. Everybody has the opportunity and should be building their personal brand. If I flip that a little bit and somebody says, but Stuart, I'm already very popular. Everybody knows me for one thing. Mm. Do you have any specific pointers in that scenario? I'd say lean into it, okay. do more of that thing. Um, people are always trying to think of ways to exhaust all of their energy in improving some marginal thing that they're not quite as good at, when in fact they can put that same effort into something they're good at and become great at it. So if you're already known for being good at something, then get known for being great at it. Get more well known for it. Let the whole world see how good you are at that thing. And keep sharing. Yeah, I think good, good advice. Um, if we look at a professional and the professional is taking the time, invested the time to build their personal brand, mm -hmm. they've taken the time, introspection, put out content, shared, without actually expecting anything back, like you suggested, what kind of benefits can we expect? I don't know if there are any stories or you can share as well, but what kind of benefits can, can we expect in that situation? Well, a lot of people think that the primary motivation for getting onto YouTube, for example, is monetization, where you get paid for the adverts that get shown before your video. I never expected to get to a, a point where I'd be monetized for years. And I did get monetized much earlier than I expected. And in some fields, that's, that pays a lot more than other fields. For example, project management content is picked up in advertising for um, people who are usually within a certain age group um, and they have a certain disposition towards purchasing products. So 
that's higher than say children buying toys. <laughs> it's a, they don't have mon their own money and they don't have the means to go and buy these things. Yeah. So advertising is quite cheap in those kind of areas, I'd, I'd guess. I don't know for sure if you can actually advertise toys so much on, on uh, YouTube. But my point is though, I didn't expect this to be, the. this was not going to be a financial route for me. This wasn't the plan. The plan was to improve my profile and to get known for being more competent, to de-risk aspects of my career so that there'd be other people that would be able to say, actually, yeah, I need somebody in project management and I know this guy, he's actually just said he's available now. So yeah. it opens an opportunity. But other things have come up since. Um, notably, um, actually, there's a couple of things. Uh, public speaking opportunities have emerged over the last year. Uh, I've done a talk with the PMI chapter last year. I'm doing a talk with another one in a few weeks. Um, I did a presentation at the uh, Digital PM Summit last year. Uh, that was really nice to, to do that. But the best thing that's come out of it is the friendships that have been formed with other creators. You see, here's the thing, right? We're not all, the, the, there are obviously exceptions, but my experience has been that most people who are creators in that space are not viewing everyone else's competition. They're viewing everyone else potentially as potential collaborators. Yeah. And as collaborators, we all grow together. So if you start to form friendships and relationships, uh, sometimes sharing advice, sharing insights. Um, before we started recording, for example, yeah. I told you about uh, a audio, uh, sorry, a, a video conferencing system that I'm going to experiment with, and you know, yeah. it, it's useful information potentially to you. It's that kind of thing, you know. And then you, over time, you build these, you build closer and closer relations. So eventually, you're not talking collaborators; you're talking friendships now. Sure. And I found the creator community can be one of the most supportive communities that I've ever encountered. So. When you start getting into it and you start to be engaged with people by people to to work together on something it's thrilling and it's a great way to make new friends so so in terms of those benefits yes public speaking in one case being known as an expert in a way i got recognized once <laughs> So I had fame. <laughs> You've got <gone> famous. <laughs> it didn't go to my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I made mean, it happen to be in a project management environment and somebody said, I think I've seen one of your videos. And that was about the extent of it. I wasn't asked for an autograph or anything. <laughs> but uh, that was a nice feeling. Uh, so there's that. And then the relationships that come from it. And also, the whole time you're doing this, you're developing a new or you're enhancing a skill set, either your written skills are improving or your video skills. There's no downside to it. Potentially, you're, you're building the tools for an additional career if you need it. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. I think the, the relationships are quite key. As when I started podcast, I, I, was, I became a podcast almost accidentally by creating content and people saying we would like to get other people to collaborate with you. And I started doing that. And the network you build is, is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I think, and I agree, the creator con community is very, very accommodating, very nice. It's very, it's, if you want to build a professional network, it's probably the best network you can build. I agree. Um, in, in, so many, in so many ways, it's, it's brilliant. Um, and I, I think uh, you've done a lot of good work, as in, you've got a lot of content out there. As in, so the benefit you deserve, I think you definitely deserve, deserve that benefit. Um, in, I've got one final question in closing, more around you. Um, so it'll be good for our audience. I know we jumped straight into the topic. To just zoom out a little bit, let's say, okay, who is Stuart Taylor? <laughs> what do you do? Any interesting projects you're, you're working on now? And obviously, how can people reach you? Because you are a content creator. So there's a lot of content out there that you've produced. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> This is an interesting question, I guess, because there comes a point when you start doing this where you start to identify yourself as a content creator. And I can't remember when that started to happen to me. It didn't take very long. Uh, I think I made my first two videos and I started, seeing, I started referring to myself as a content creator. So I am Stuart Taylor. I am the PMO 
who is obsessed with helping the project managers that he works with to be successful and to avoid the pitfalls that their career can sometimes offer to protect them from the businesses they work with. Usually PMOs are trying to protect the business from the project managers. <laughs> That's the way it tends to work. I, I, I kind of balance it equally. I'm also trying to protect the project managers from the business too because if there's one thing I've discovered, business can be ruthless. So I'm really passionate about helping project managers in that sense. I've started offering uh, coaching and mentoring now to project managers, which there's details on my website, influentialpmo.com. Um, but to be honest, if that's not for everyone, uh, most of my content just goes into video anyway. So just watch the videos over on YouTube on Influential PMO and you'll pick up most of the, uh, the things that I've got to share or the most of the things I've got uh, strong opinions on. And that's it. I, I'm, I'm a family guy. Uh, I, I try to balance my work-life balance with this creative side of my life. Um, I'm trying to remember to do things like get enough exercise <laughs> because, you know, when you get too busy, you think that's the thing I've got to sacrifice. And yet what happens then is you end up, you know, becoming unhealthy and then you become unwell. Then all the other things go out to balance. Yeah. So I'm trying to remember to do that. I'm trying to remember to get plenty of sleep. Uh, it's at well, one point when I got started on this, I was in the 4 a.m. club. I, I was getting up at four o'clock every morning to create content, to be script writing so enthusiastic i was learning how to use the, the different editing tools and i was trying to learn how to use cameras properly and i really got a fire in my belly for it uh, but getting up at four o'clock in the morning and depriving yourself of sleep is a bad idea in the long term i'm now in the half past five club <laughs> which I'm is all right gradually crawl back which is all right <laughs> as in, I, I have done both i've done the 4 a.m i have done six i've done five and a half so uh, it, five and a half is okay yeah that's good balance <laughs> <laughs> especially when you've got a one-year-old as well <laughs> the last year has been a, a little bit tricky in terms of uh, guaranteeing good sleep <laughs> indeed indeed okay no brilliant i think too it's been a fascinating conversation thanks for sharing authentically thanks for sharing yourself and I think there's a lot of value there for anybody who's building their career, looking at their career, even if they're comfortable where they are, the time to start building a personal brand is now. Yeah, um, it can help you where you are now. That's exactly. the other part of this. It's not just true. de-risking, it's also enhancing potentially. True, true. Um, and all, all, like what you said, all you need to do to start is share what you already know. Put your thoughts together. It will actually make those thoughts a little more concrete. Because for you to communicate something, that means it's clear in your mind what it is you're trying to communicate. You actually learned more, even though it's information you already have. By doing that, just by following that advice, you learn more, you share it out, you give out, and people become, you, like you said, you, it, it, it solidifies where you are now, as a, and you build a fascinating network as, yeah. as a product of that as well. Well, the other part as well, which you know I shouldn't forget to mention, is if you know just one thing more than the person in your audience, you're an expert. So don't feel like, you know, I'm not good enough at what I do. I'm not an expert enough. I'm not good at doctorate in project management or, or whatever else you think you need. All you need to know is one thing more than your audience. Share that. You've added value to their world. Indeed. indeed. Just share what you know, even if it's just one thing more than everybody else. Yeah. You share that. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm um, looking forward to continue to collaborate and to connect. Thank Definitely. you. Thanks for tuning in to my conversation with Stuart. I have certainly learned more about building a powerful personal brand. If this episode was of value to you, please consider leaving a review wherever you get your podcasts. I would like to invite you to continue the conversation on our community website, thechangelead.com. Our free community website provides a platform to share and discuss the challenge of leadership and change with fellow professionals. Be sure to visit our site, thechangelead.com, and join the conversation. Now, would you like to connect with today's guest, Stuart? You can find his details in the show notes. Finally, please don't forget to like, comment, review, and subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day, and see you next time.